United USA. Here we got Project Veritas. Uh, got James O'Keefe, house raided by the FBI. Listen up. Violated his constitutional rights. You'll be shocked to find out why. Listen here. The FBI raided the home of Project Veritas CEO and founder James O'Keefe, along with other Project Veritas journalists, as part of an investigation into a diary believed to have been written by Joe Biden's daughter, Ashley. Now, according to O'Keefe, within an hour of the first raid last week, the New York Times reached out for comment. Now, how did the Times know about the search warrant so quickly? I don't know, it's just one of many unanswered questions. Kind of sounds like that pre-dawn raid on Roger Stone, fake news CNN cameras just happen to be there uh, at five o'clock in the morning. Anyway, here to explain more, his first interview, he is the CEO and founder of Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, along with his attorney, Paul uh, Calli is with us. Uh, welcome both of you. James, I think it's important to establish other media and I'm not comparing you to other media, but other media use undercover cameras and have for many, many years, like even 60 Minutes and uh, NBC's To Catch a Predator, right? That this this is not a new form of journalism. You acknowledge that? Well, Sean, on Saturday morning, uh, I acknowledge that, but I woke up to a pre-dawn raid uh, banging on my door I went to the door to answer the door, and there were 10 FBI agents with a battering ram, uh, white blinding lights. They turned me around, handcuffed me, and threw me against the hallway. Uh, I was partially clothed in front of my neighbors. Uh, they confiscated my phone. They raided my apartment. On my phone were many of my reporter's notes, a lot of my sources unrelated to this story, and a lot of confidential donor information to our news organization, Sean. So I I've heard the phrase, the process is the punishment. I didn't really understand what that meant until this weekend. And, and Sean, I wouldn't wish this on any journalist. Let me, let me go into the issue. Like anybody that works in any form of, of journalism or in the press in any capacity, whether you're a talk show host like me or doing what you do or doing what anybody else does, in the course of doing your work, you have sources, correct? You have whistleblowers. You have people giving you tips all the time. To what extent can you tell us the context under which you were given this diary? I assume you did not take the diary yourself, did you not? Is that correct? That's correct. I'll speak to that, Sean, if I can. Um, an anonymous source contacted Project Veritas and indicated the source had in its lawful possession a copy of the diary that the source said belonged to Ashley Biden. Project Veritas had no prior contact with the source. The source had a lawyer. The lawyer engaged in negotiations with Veritas's in-house counsel in the resulting written agreement, like so many news organizations do. Veritas, uh, the, the, the source again, affirmed that it had lawful possession of the source material. In exchange for that, Veritas agreed to pay money for the right to publish the material. As you know, Sean, uh, Veritas never did. It killed the story on the newsroom floor. It went a step further, and it turned the material into local law enforcement. The actions of President Biden's Department of Justice in this case are unprecedented because there's let decades me, let me go of into Supreme this. Court precedent. J James, I've known you for a long time. You had no direct knowledge that what this source was giving you was, could in any way have been stolen. You, at, you were not able to corroborate the authenticity of the diary, and you never ran it. At what point, then, did you go to law enforcement on your own unsolicited and tell them that you had this in your possession and it might be somebody else's? Well, Sean, I mean, we, you know, we get uh, sources come to us all the time. We have thousands of sources come to Project Veritas. The routine nature of journalism to, uh, to, to be shown information from a variety of sources. Um, but this is an attack on the First Amendment by the Department of Justice. Uh, we, we didn't, we didn't uh, publish the story. We, uh, we couldn't authenticate the story, so our journalists looked into it. So, in conclusion... They could not authenticate it, so they didn't run the story. He also turned in 
the diary to law enforcement. Here it is a year ago, and then, you know, a year later now, the FBI raids his house and takes his phones, personal information. You know, he's got a lot of leads in there, people who donate to his organization, ongoing stories, lots of personal information, and completely violated his constitutional rights. If you agree, please like and share this video.